What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Today is, I guess, part one of several days of us recording live videos testing the new Burning Shadow stuff. Now, if you watched the videos earlier, you saw us break down these two decks. And on the left, we have myself playing the Greninja Break deck. And on the right, we have the uh, new Guard of War GX deck that is everybody is hyping up and... Um, is one of the contenders to be one of the best decks uh, coming out of the Burning Shadows format uh, going into Worlds, and then after that for sure. Um, it can easily counter Garboder, it has a ton of eight damage, and uh, it's basically like a little baby Mewtwo. Uh, and it's not a baby Mewtwo, it is like a Mewtwo. But uh, we see myself get a mulligan there, and we're going to shuffle up get six new cards. And there we go, uh, going to get the price cards out. And <clears throat> as you saw, there's there's diet balls and everything. And if you miss the deck breakdown, it'll be down below. The two the two decks will be down below. You can see in the uh, in the description where the links are to their videos, where you can see us break down the Gardevoir GX deck and the Greninja break deck. We actually talk we also talk about changes we'd make to the list uh, going forward and uh, stuff like that. So it's a very good video to see if you haven't seen it yet. Yet. But you know, Gardevoir GX is 230 HP, has that. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the ability is called. Um, it lets you attach a Fairy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So it's really good to combine well. Let me see if I can pull the image up. Let's see. It attacks Infinite Force. It does 30 times the amount of energies of both Pokemon. Twilight GX gets 10 energies back in your hand. And I think it's Secret. Spring. I can't read this image is too small, but we see myself. Uh, we so far we got three mulligans. We're just gonna sit here and wait till I get all these mulligans. There's a couple uh, with Greninja. In this list, there's only four, five, six, seven Pokemon, seven base Pokemon. There's the four. Uh, I guess the four Froakies, the one Drachi, and the two Staryu's. Um, so that sometimes is a problem when you're like when you only have six or four or five six seven seven base Pokemon it's sometimes hard to get them But here we go take number four do we find a base Pokemon and we finally do and if I remember correctly I think it's not the correct start that we really want to see Vlad drawing a bunch of cards He has that Mallow that's pretty good to use in this deck because he does play the auxiliary and we see Vlad is starting with that routes Alrighty, and it's Seeker Spring. Sorry. That's a, uh, the, the guarded thing Alright, so you see that I do start with Jirachi, which is unfortunate. Jirachi does not have that furry tree, so you gotta put an energy on it to actually get it out of the way. Which is never good. So we see Vlad put down a room raid, which is really nice because he wants to get that turn two auxiliary set up ASAP. And then he's able uh, to use that Mallow and get set up. So we're going to see he's going to Ultra Ball. Discard two choice bands. We know what decks we're playing against each other. We actually know the exact 60 for both decks. And uh, we're going to see him discard both those choice bands. They're not useful in this matchup. He knows that we're playing. I mean, even when we're Mulligan, he saw like Greninjas, he saw Dive Balls. He knows he's playing a Gren Greninja Break regardless. And he doesn't need those choice bands because I have no EX or GX in my deck. Um, now, I have seen some Greninja decks play like Tapu Lele. Um, and I, I mean, if you know they're playing Tapu Lele, then maybe keep the choice bands. But I think discarding is fine no matter what. So we're going to see he's looking through his deck. He's going to grab a Routes. He, you did see he get that Bridget in hand. He's going to opt not to guess get the Lele and go for the Bridget. I guess he wants to get the Routes out. And he's got a Fairy G. He's going to attach it to the active. And what else does he have in his hand? He's got a Mallow. He's got, uh, okay, nope, we're going to see an end. Both players are going to shuffle up against six new cards. Now, with this, all we really need for my turn is just a Froakie and Energy. As long as we get that, we're good to go. Maybe two Froakies, just in case he gets, like, a crazy turn two, Rare Candy, Guard of War, Lysander, Energy play. Uh, that would be pretty insane to see. But it could happen. So, realistically, we want two Froakies and an Energy, and that's it. And just let the Jirachi get knocked out, and that's fine. This deck does play Wally, so you can't Wally turn into Frogadier to get that water duplicates off. But both players are going to shuffle up. And what Vlad's looking for here is probably maybe another Rim Raid, more routes to set up, and uh, we'll see what we find here. So, both players are going to get six new cards, okay? Alrighty, and let's see. So Vlad's hand doesn't really have anything. He has Ultra Ball, DCE, Fader G, Rescue Stretcher, two VS Seeker, so nothing too crazy in his hand. He could hold on to his Ultra Ball next turn, play it, get out of Octillery, start using Abyssal Hand to get set up. Now, my hand, uh, I know I saw a Frogadier, I see a Staryu, which is great. We need that Starmie, and there we see Staryu. Froakie come out, Water to the Froakie. And I don't think there's really there's a frog and deer in my hand, but I did not see a water energy in there right now. So on the last turn, he topped like a life sander, which is a good card to ultra ball away, uh, so he can use a VS seeker later on. And let's see what he does here. He can ultra ball, 
discard a Lysander and maybe the Fairy Energy. And he could attach a DC to the active, but then he's risking getting Stardusted. And that's never what you want to see if you're the Gardevoir player. So he would discard a Lysander. And let's see what he discards here. Will he discard the Stretcher, the DCE, the Fairy Energy, or the Via Seeker? And it looks like he's going to discard a Stretcher, okay? So he's going to look through his deck and see what's all in there. He's definitely going to grab an Octillery to start using that Abyssal Hand and try to hit a turn 2 Rare Candy Gardevoir. If he could do this, he could start to put a bunch of pressure on the field because he has a Psychic Energy, I mean a Fairy Energy and a DCE. So he could put that Fairy Energy on the active with the Secret Spring ability and attach a DCE to the bench and take a knockout on that Jirachi. And there we see the Octillery coming down. Uh, we see Vlad does have a Fairy Energy, so what he can do is attach it to the active, Abyssal Hand for 2, and try to see what he can get. Now, unfortunately... He doesn't have that Mal on the discard pile. If he had a Mal on the discard pile, he'd be good to go. He can uh, definitely guarantee this rare candy. So we see a Fairy going to the bench, and we're going to see a Bissell Hand for two. So one and two. And uh, I saw some kind of water Pokemon. So another Rimmery coming down, which is not a bad idea at all. And we'll see a VS Seeker for it. And so both players will set up against six new cards. Now, this is good for us because in my hand, we did have a Frog of Deer, but we did not have a Supporter card or a Water Energy. So both of us are going to shuffle up against six new cards. Vlad kind of saving us. He's kind, kind of saving us, but he really didn't have anything either. So he needs to shuffle up and hopefully find a Rare Candy Gardevoir this turn or at least a Rare Candy Gallade. That could work as well and just start uh, setting up some premonitions, get set up. And... Either way, Vlad's okay with taking his time and getting set up. It's going to take me a little while before I get a Greninja set up and start swinging. But once I start getting that Shadow Stitching off, he's going to be in a terrible situation. So we see a Fader G, Mallow, Tapu Lele. I see a Guardian in his hand, but I do not see a Rare Candy, unfortunately. So he does have a Fader G. He's already attached to the bench. And we're probably just going to pass on a my turn, unfortunately. All right, oh no, 10 damage uh, for routes. <laughs> All right, so on my turn, we have a Water Energy. We could attach a Jirachi, Jirachi Retreat to the Froki. We have an Ultra Ball or Dive Ball. Okay, so Dive Ball will grab us a Frogadier, and then we're going to see a Water Dupe Goods. That's all you need to do when it's your turn 2 and you're playing Greninja, because you really don't want to play a supporter card and hit more Frogadiers, because then you're in trouble, and you're going to immediately see just like Frogadier, Water Dupe Goods, and get out those three Frogadiers. And we're looking good right now. We have no Frogadiers prize. We can get maybe Greninja Breaks out. I saw a Ultra Ball in my hand, and we see Vlad getting that Octillery. Now this is a turn he really needs to find a Rare Candy and start taking knockouts on this Frogadier. Because if he doesn't, uh, he's going to be in a bad situation. We're going to start putting a lot of pressure on him by getting on Greninja, start Shadow Stitching, and make it where that Secret Spring ability, secret spin ability never works. All right, so we see a Tapu Lele. Going to use that Wonder Tag and search for Supporter Card. Right now would be a great time to use a Colrus. Oh, man, Colrus shuffling at 9. Um, now, one card that we did take out of the deck that would be really good right now is a Skyla. Um, but later, if you watched the video earlier, we're talking about how you kind of maybe want Skyla. Uh, but it looks like he is going to grab a Sycamore, okay. And uh, maybe you play Skyla, I don't know. I'm still not 100% sure how it works. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to put the Sycamore in hand, and we're going to see if the Sycamore discard in his hand and draw on seven. Oh, Mallow, there we go. Uh, so Mallow will give him two cards top of his deck. So it looks like he was just Tapu Lele just to get two cards out. So he did have the Mallow, so he's good to go here. He can put the Rare Candy on top uh, if he doesn't already have the Gardevoir in hand. I think he, he, he must not have the Gardevoir in hand like I thought it did, because uh, you see that Gardevoir be at the bottom. It looks like he's trying to pick which order he wants. Uh, so with Mallow, you put two cards on top of your deck and shuffle the, or you pick two cards, shuffle your deck, and put those two cards on top of your deck. It looks like he's going to eyeball that Rare Candy Gardevoir, and uh, that's what he wants here. If he can get the Rare Candy Gardevoir, he can start swinging uh, the Infinite Force. Right now it does 90, and then <clears throat> the problem afterwards is he doesn't uh, take a knockout on a Greninja straight away, uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, unless he gets like a... Well, he isn't. I don't think he's... Yeah, he's already attached. So, because this turned three, if I remember correctly. So, he's already attached. But, I mean, he should be fine. He can still put a DCE or use Seeker Spring and attach and knock out a Greninja next turn. It does have that 130 HP, which is kind of weird when you're doing that uh, 30 times um, stuff. Now, if this was Mewtwo and it did 10 plus 30, it would actually knock out a Greninja with one less energy. So, that's something to note uh, between the differences. So, see Vlad just look at those decks, see what all he wants to grab here. Uh, just trying to see what all combinations he wants to do. Looks like he's going to grab a Gardevoir and a Routes. Okay. 
So he's going to shuffle up here, and we're going to see what does he get. I mean, he must already have a rare candy in hand. Um, <clears throat> so he only has four cards in hand, but he's going to be able to Abyssal Hand and put one card in his hand, and then he's going to be able to rare candy Gardevoir GX, and then he used another Abyssal Hand. So we see Abyssal Hand number one. Oh, and there's the Gardevoir, so he's going to rare candy into that Gardevoir. He's going to Abyssal Hand number two to get two more cards in his hand, and we know one of those is going to be a route. So there's the routes coming up and the uh, DCE, and the DCE is really good. Next turn, can help him knock out a Greninja if needed, and we are going to see... Uh, well, if he has a Fader G, he can use an Infinite, or not Infinite Force, a Seeker Spring. It looks like he doesn't have it, but he'll still take a Knockout, uh, take a prize card, going down to five. And then on my turn, it's time to get some Greninja's out. So Greninja number one, Greninja number two, Choice Band two, Greninja. Uh, all right, and a Water Energy. So this is going to allow us to use the Shadow Stitching, doing 40, plus Choice Band 70, and make it where he cannot use that Seeker Spring attack. But we know that he does have a DC in hand, which will allow him to knock out a Greninja next turn. So we'll see retreat into the Greninja, uh, not finding the third Greninja, unfortunately, but still getting two Greninjas out is really strong. And if you notice, that Greninja is has a uh, a splash energy on it. I know it's hard to tell, but that little black line uh, next to the energy is our splash energies. We unfortunately did not have any at the time. I don't know where they're at, uh, but. Let's see, he'll probably attach a DCC active because it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. He can't just attach a singular energy because it only does 120, unfortunately. Uh, so you'll see him try to use the ability, but then I say, hold on, I shadow stitching, and he's like, okay. And this is where the matchup kind of starts swinging in the Greninja's favor, because we have shadow stitch, he can't attach multiple energies per turn, and he has to commit a DC to the active. Regardless, it looks like he was going to, but now he can't get multiple set up. So, we're going to see a Sycamore discarding a Lele, and in, uh, is that a, I don't know, I mean... I don't think he's supposed to play Skyla, if I remember correctly. I don't think he's playing. It looks like a Skyla, though. Uh, we see a Curly come down. He does have an Ultra Ball. Maybe get another Curly if he wants to. He's got a uh, Field Blower. He can get rid of the Choice Band off the Active. But he's going to take a Knockout anyway, so that's not a good idea. And uh, let's see. Does he Ultra Ball for another Curlia? He's going to think. Uh, he's got an Ultra Ball. He can get a Lysander. He's going to look through his Disco Pro. He did not have a Rare Candy Gallade, unfortunately. That's what he kind of needed this turn. But next turn, we're going to get the Greninja back in our hand because the Splash Energy will save us. And uh, we'll be able to have two Greninjas online. And uh, let's see, so he has 70 HP. And this is where, like, Greninja math becomes hard for me and Vlad because we don't know the exact numbers. You see his uh, meme already. Trying to figure out, can we take a knockout? Now, with a Shadow Stitching, it does 60. You pick it up 80 plus a Choice Band is 110. Plus a giant water shurikens one ninety. Uh, I'm still not a hundred percent sure on that math. Uh, you see us right now. We're trying to figure out uh, how, how can uh, we, we, we did this. We're kind of like working together, make sure we're doing everything right, and uh, trying to make the best video we can. So right now we're trying to figure out how does Greninja take a knockout on uh, this guard of over two hundred and thirty HP. That's the thing though. It has two thirty. So. Alright, so we're gonna we're gonna wait here a second while we try to figure out some Greninja math. Um, but let's see what how we do here. We have multiple water G, so we're allowed to do that. Um, I think we take a knockout if we get everything. Like if we get the Greninja I mean if we get the Greninja break, the water energy, the choice band, I think I'm pretty sure it's enough to take a knockout. If I remember correctly, I'm just wanna double check my math and make sure I don't do anything incorrectly. So we see a Greninja coming down. Uh, we have some multiple water G's in our hand. So we have teammates, and with this teammates, we can get any two cards out of our deck, which is going to be a Choice Band and maybe a Greninja Break. And there's a Choice Band coming down. And this is where Greninja is so strong, because we all we do is Shadow Stitching, and now we're going to be able to knock out this Gardevoir GX and put Vlad in a terrible position. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get that Greninja Break and that Choice Band, so it allows you extra damage. I don't know why I showed him. I was just, I guess it was going to be attached anyway. Uh, we could have kept that a secret, but it really didn't matter too much, I guess. So, Greninja Break, another Splash Energy, a Choice Band coming out. Uh, we're going to see a treat into the Greninja Break. We will Giant Water Shark in the active for 60, and we will use that Moonlight Slash uh, to 6, pick the energy up 70, and then plus a Choice Band, uh, one or no, 6, 7, 8, and 110. Uh, then has 12, 13, and it does exact numbers. Uh, so, we have to pick up everything. If we do not pick up, we're actually short. 
Uh, so that's something to note. Yeah, if we do not pick up the energy, we're actually short to take up knockout. I think we're 10 damage short, if I remember correctly, when we did the math here. So we are going to pick up the energy. You see, we're, we're arguing how the math works. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you pick up the energy, we take a knockout. If you leave it on with the Moonlight Slash, I'm 10 damage short. So unfortunately, I have to pick it up. But can Vlad respond here? He still needs a ton of energies to actually knock us out. That Grenade Break does have 170 HP. And right now, he has to find a Gardevoir. He's got to find maybe two Gardevoirs. Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12. We're actually pretty safe here, I think. If he finds, like, double Gardevoir, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. He only does 150 if he finds a DC and two Gardevoirs. Yeah, 3... 6, 9, 12, 15, 150. So he still can't even take a knockout because it's a double Gardevoir and a DC here. So we're looking good. Uh, we're going to take a knock on the Gardevoir GX and put Vlad in a terrible situation. And he's going to Ultra Ball. And right now things are about to get really worse for Vlad because he's going to look through his deck and notice that he probably has two uh, Gardevoir GXs. And uh, you're going to see him shuffle one more time. And he's going to realize, like, oh, man, I've made a huge mistake. My I have prized two Gardevoir GXs and uh, I... A, uh, a rescue stretcher in his discard pile as well. So this can become a very hard game for Vlad for sure. Uh, so yeah, it's going to change all of a sudden. And uh, I think the game's going to start going downhill really bad for Vlad. So you see he's going to get that Glade. And instead of getting the Gardevoir, I'm going to look through his discard pile, make sure how many are in there. And we're going to notice that only one Gardevoir is in his deck, unfortunately. And that's what happens when you play three Gardevoir GXs. Sometimes you prize two of them and you're in trouble. You prize one of them. Uh, early game when he discarded that, that rescue stretcher, I don't think he, I don't think he, he, I don't know if he looked, oh, he did look through his deck, but he must have noticed, he didn't really look to see how many Gardevoir GXs were in the discard pile, so he's going to put a DC on the active, uh, you'll see it take that back uh, real quick, and I think that's fine, if you put a DC in the active, you do you do put yourself to be a Stardusted away, uh, you really want to save that DC for later on for a Gardevoir GX to get that boosted 60 out of nowhere. So we're going to see Vlad use that Premonition, look at top five cards of his deck, and he's going to be able to Bissell Hand and everything like that and be able to put anything he wants on top of his deck. Now what he's looking for here is a Stretcher or a Super Rod. I can't remember if he plays two suit Stretcher or Super Rod. If you look at the video earlier, uh, it has the exact deck list. I don't have it on me right now, unfortunately. But we're going to see Vlad Bissell Hand for two, hitting that Rare Canyon VS Seeker. Okay. Um... So he can't use the rare candy because he has a um, Gardevoir and Pen Hand. Uh, and what we might see, he has a Hex in hand, so what he can do is Hex and Sensitive Blade for 130. Okay, so there's the Hex. So he's going to move a Hex, so he can't use uh, Shadow Stitching, or not Shadow Stitching, a Giant Water Share again. But what we're probably going to do is, like I said, just Shadow Stitching here for uh, 40 and pick a knockout the next turn. So there we see 130 damage coming down. We see another Greninja Break coming online. We do have a Splash Energy we could put on it. Uh, we can retreat. And uh, we're going to see an end. Build players are going to shuffle up. Going to get some less cards. Uh, what we're looking here is for more Frokies. We need to get another Greninja built up. So if we find a Froakie, we can mainly evolve that into a Greninja and be good to go that way. We need a... I mean, we really don't need another attacker, but it's really good to have one. And what we kind of need is a Starmie as well to start using this ability, Space Beacon ability to get energies out of Disco Power in our hand, which is really nice as well. So we're going to shuffle up here, and uh, we're both going to get four cards. We're tied up right now. So, I mean, what Vlad really needs to find is a way to get those uh, that Greninja out of the discard pile. So he's going to draw into two DCEs, uh, which is really unfortunate. We see a Dive Ball. Good to get out of Froakie. We look at our discard pile, see what's all in there. And we know there's a Frog of Deer in the deck, because when a Greninja got knocked out earlier, it had a s Splash Energy. So we have, the we have the Frog of Deer in our deck still, so we can still go to that. Greninja does have free treat, so we're going to treat to new Greninja. And we're going to Static Fishing for 40 damage. All right, so on Vlad's turn... Let's see, he's got some DCs hand, so one thing he could do is maybe some DCs on the top of Lele, make it where he can start swinging with it. That's not too bad of an idea. Um, maybe he wants to start piling up a route, so you touch a fear to do that. I'm not sure how he wants to play this matchup right now, um, especially with two Guard of Wars being prized. Now, we're not going to scoop any of these matches. We're going to play them all the way out. There's not a time limit. I mean, in real life, Vlad might want to scoop here um, just because he doesn't have any more Guard of Wars. He's in trouble. And uh, he really can't do too much. So is he a Via Seeker for another Hacks? Uh, we'll see a Sense of Blade for another 130. Okay. And what we'll have to do here is another Shadow Stitching for 40 more damage. Um, really can't do anything else outside of that. We did have to get a Greninja Break or he would be knocked out. And we we'll see a Dive Ball. So we're going to grab a Frog of Deer. And we're still going to have another... Uh, 
another Greninja ready to go after this one gets knocked out of the active, which is really good. And you see there's a Frog of Deer in there. Actually, I'm going to grab a Froakie. Okay. I guess. Oh, I, I know why. I know why. Okay, so we're going to get a Die Evolve. We're going to shuffle up here. Um, the reason I'm getting a Froakie is because I want to get two Frog of Deers out when he takes a knockout this turn. So I want a Sycamore, discarding a Sycamore and a Greninja. We're going to get seven new cards. If we find a Froakie here, kind of risky here. Uh, but we hit a uh, we hit a rescue stretcher, which can allow us to get a frog of deer out of a discard pile in our hand. And then when the active Greninja gets knocked out, we're able to have a we're able to put down a Froki or a frog of deer and a Greninja thanks to that splash energy. So they receive a stretcher, getting a frog of deer back into our hand. Uh, we'll put that down on the bench. Uh, kind of risky. I guess we kind of maybe just die ball for the frog of deer, just kind of being greedy right now, getting multiple Greninjas ready to go. We'll put an energy attachment to that bench frog of deer, I mean the bench Greninja break, and we'll do another shadow searching for 60. Uh, this Greninja break will fall, and it's going to be up to Vlad to find a rare candy uh, Gardevoir. Alrighty, so he's got a VS Seeker, he's got a DCE, and like I said, what he, one thing he could be doing is power up that Tapu Lele, trying to get ready to go, but even then, it's a uh, it's a GX knockout, which is not what Vlad wants to do here. He doesn't want to give up two prize cards. So, let's see, he's got a VS Seeker, DCE, he could VS Seeker for another Hex, um, he could VS Seeker for Sycamore, he needs to find a way to get set up right now, kind of. Uh, so, we see a DC going to the routes, okay. Because as soon as he doesn't hex here, what we're going to do is we are going to like giant water chicken a bench routes. Uh, we could like just double giant water chicken the, the routes and take a double knockout that turn if we wanted to. Uh, that that Greninja stuff should be returned back into my hand, and I think I fixed this here in a second. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right, I forget sometimes that this is splash energy, but it did have that black marking as you see. So there's a uh, frog of deer Greninja coming down. We got a water energy. He did hex us, so we can't use a giant water shark in here. But we can take a knockout for 80. Uh, which is really nice. Pick the energy up, take a knockout. And then what can Vlad do? So we see a water energy going to the bench, Greninja. We are going to retreat and use that. Uh, going to use that sh Moonlight Slash. Pick up the energy and do an 80 damage. Take a knockout on that Gardevoir. Now Vlad is able to use his abilities this turn. We did not Shadow Touch him here. But I think... I mean, with two guardies being prized, he's definitely in trouble. Unless he found a Gardevoir on, uh, yeah, unless he found a Gardevoir on, on the prize cards, but you see, it does not look like he did because he's immediately not grabbing it. Son of last turn, gonna draw a card. And, uh, I guess it must not be a good card because he's sitting there looking at it like, oh man, this is not a card I want to see. And this is very unfortunate for a while. So this game is pretty much done. There's another curler coming down. A DCTD active. He can use Energy Drive for 40. Uh, I'm going to let him take it back here. He just now realized that he is not shadow stitching, so you're going to see me take that off, put it back, and we'll let him uh, do the shadow stitching here. It's okay. Uh, we're trying to make the best game we can possible, so we see him. Uh, he's going he's gonna to abyssal hand and immediately regret it because he finds multiple <laughs> rare candies, and uh, he's got another abyssal hand. There's a super rod, so he can super rod, put back in the Guardi, the Gallade, and then maybe a Fear Energy, so there you go. Uh, can he, can next turn, can he finally find this one Gardevoir, maybe go the distance, I don't know, it's still going to be very rough for him, uh, for sure. Now we do have three price cards left, uh, we see a Fairy going down, uh, what we can do is put out a Greninja Break, maybe a Giant Water Shuriken, that bench routes, take a knock on it if you want to go that way, um, 8, 9, 10, 11, um, we can actually win next turn, if we get a Greninja Break, uh, hit the bench routes, then uh, instead of the other Greninja Break, Giant Water Shuriken in the active, and then pick up the energy, we do 110 plus 60, 170, and there we see a uh, energy drive for 40, and on my turn, uh, you're going to see we put down the Greninja uh, Starmie coming down, okay. Uh, so we should definitely win right now, but you're going to notice that I do not see this straight away, unfortunately. So we see a Greninja Break coming down, we got the Giant Water Shuriken, we hit the bench routes for 60, and... Um, yeah, I think that's what we should do here, but I don't know if I do it or not. So we hit the active for 60, okay? And this is where I kind of make some silly uh, stuff here. Uh, <laughs> you're going to see me not... I mean, uh, after watching this game, I was like, oh, man, definitely should have hit the routes and hit the cur hit the, hit the the top of Layla and take a knockout for game. Uh, but it's one of my first times playing Greninja in real life, so I really don't know how to play it. Uh, but definitely could have win right here. Just a mistake on my part. And we're going to hit the active for 60, Okay. 
Um, what am I gonna do now? So six twelve. What I could do here is just shadow stitch. Like, I can do another sixty to the active and shadow stitch and take a knockout, which is fine, I guess. Uh, either way, we're putting Vlad in a terrible situation. Uh, yep. So we will see a space speaking going at two waters out of a discard pile, and there we go. And we're gonna see a retreat into the other Greninja break. We do have a uh, see. I should hit the bench routes right here for sixty, and then and then Moonlight Slash for the game. But unfortunately, I do not see this. Uh, which, like I said, Greninja still new, and you're gonna see uh, me switch out the energies real quick. Uh, when I space speak and actually grabbed a splash energy, and there's another one that's not a splash energy. So there we go. Just making sure we, we do everything correctly, and we are just going to attach energy to the bench, and we're gonna shut up switching here for the knockout. All right, so we got a one prize card. Um, like I said, we could have won that turn, but unfortunately, we didn't do it correctly. I, I think that's what we're seeing right now as we're pointing out that routes play. We could have knocked out the routes and uh, have won that turn, but didn't see it. But we'll see what Vlad does here. I mean, he still needs a lot to make a comeback. He has to knock out three Greninjas. We have a Greninja break and a Greninja ready to go next turn. Especially if he takes a knockout, we've got that Splash Energy. Splash Energy is saving us so much. And Vlad is on top deck of Sycamore. He's gonna put a DC on the active maybe. It really does mm -mm. What Vlad needs to find here is like a like a rare candy guard of a rare candy Gallade and a Guard of War to actually save that route from being knocked out. Because if he doesn't he's in trouble. But, uh, yeah, I mean, regardless, I think Vlad has lost his game. Really not much else he could do. He could put a DC maybe on the active and swing for more damage. But looks like he's going to put a DC on that bench route. So we're going to see a Sycamore discarding three rare candies. And uh, now he has, he has to find another rare candy Glade. And let's see, what did he find? And you're going to notice he did not find anything. He did not find another Pokemon. <laughs> he has four cards left in deck. And, uh... <laughs> Oh my goodness, Vlad just not having good luck here. Just not finding any Pokemon, unfortunately. And uh, that is going to be game there. Vlad not finding anybody. You're going to look at his prize cards. And we're going to see two <laughs> two Gardevoirs are prized. And if you look at the bottom cards of his deck, there's a Glade a, a, a Glade and a Gardevoir in there. So, game number one, I guess, you know, he prized two, Gar he prized two Gardevoirs, which is very unfortunate. But I do think the matchup is really big in the Greninja favor. Uh, Greninja using that Shadow Stitching make where uh, Gardevoir can't use its ability to get extra fatalities on the floor uh, does hurt a lot. He can't use the Octillery to set up, so he can't use the Mallow Octillery combo. So it's definitely very, very rough for the Gardevoir player, but we're going to see what happens. I mean, if Vlad gets a turn two crazy Gardevoir set up, he could easily take the game and is overwhelmed the, the Greninja player, uh, which could happen as well. So there's a lot of different things that could change his game and uh, the dynamic and Another thing that comes down is how many frog pieces is a Greninja player prized. Uh, if you prize like two frog deers, well, it's definitely going to go in Guardi's favor. So, even though the matchup is lopsided in Greninja's favor, it can happen either way. It can go either way. Uh, but either way, the, the biggest thing about this uh, about this matchup is a lot of people talk about is you know Greninja auto wins this, and that's why we're showing it today. We're showing it off, showing off the new Guardi, and showing the potential of Greninja for World. Uh, but don't worry, we will have another game with Gardevoir uh, where it's not so handicapped. It's not playing a bad matchup, and that's gonna be interesting to see. And you will see that on Friday for sure. So Friday we'll have another Guardi GX deck. And if you have any deck suggestions you want to see play against each other, let me know down below in the comments as well. We'll look into those and try to play those matchups for next week because we already recorded all this week's matches so we see both players do get a mulligan here uh vlad will have a four house well i only have a three of a kind so vlad does beat me with the better hand unfortunately <laughs> uh so yeah i mean uh i don't know we'll just wait here to shuffle up here but guys, like I said, if you if you want to see some more matches, let me know uh one match that i want to record for next week wants to, is metagross versus um, Metagross versus Mega Rayquaza. I think that'd be a very interesting matchup to see, just because Metagross has a 250 HP, while Rayquaza only hits for 240, unless they find a Kikui for 260. I think that would be something cool to see. And uh, the matches we record this week, if you want to know ahead of time. So Tuesday, we are going to have a Glissopod Decidueye versus a Espeon Garboder. Okay, Wednesday we talk about my five, the top 10 cards in uh, the new Burning Shadow set. 
Thursday, we have Volcanion versus Darkrai, both updated Burning Shadows. And then Friday, we have a Gardevoir GX versus Glissapod Decidueye, which is the, probably the two biggest decks coming out of the new set, uh, Glissapod and um, Gardevoir, the pretty much two biggest decks coming out of Burning Shadows. So we see Vlad does get a mulligan, going to set up five, seven new cards. And this is something you don't want to do against Greninja. You don't want them to have extra cards. Be able to set up very easily. But Vlad will still be able to go first, and he will... Um, be, he might be able to start taking those turn two knockouts, like I said, and that's the key thing here. If Vlad can get set up really quickly, start swinging those guardies uh, by turn two, it does put a lot of pressure on that Greninja player, and they can easily lose their game. So we see Vlad going to get seven new cards, and we're going to see he does find a Pokemon. Nope, he is going to mulligan one more time, not finding a route, not finding Octillery, Tapu Lele, and I think that's pretty much all he plays. I think it's... I think it's seven as no, it might be it might be eight basic Pokemon as well in his deck. But guys, who do you want to see win this match? The, do you want to see the Gardevoir player come out, take down the evil Greninja deck, or do you want to see Greninja do well again? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm 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 interested to see how Worlds is going to play out. There's so many new decks coming. There's so many decks in this format that anything can happen. Um, and you'll see that throughout this week. You'll see a ton of different decks that we show off. During this chat or during this week, so that's really cool to see. But we'll see Vlad will shuffle up and let's see what seven new cards does he find here. We're gonna take number two, okay? So, and Vlad never used his GX ability too, which I don't think you're really going to. I mean, he only had one Gardevoir out and it only swung for like two turns, if that. Uh, so, let's we'll see, he did find a Gardevoir and he found, looks like a Routes coming down. Alright, so there we go. So, we get two Mulligans here. And here we go, guys. On to game number two, we have the Gardevoir versus Greninja. And we will see what happens. So, we do start with that Staryu. It has a free treat, which is pretty fantastic. And on a Vlad's turn, I don't, did Vlad just draw? Did Vlad draw? One, two, three. Oh, there he goes. All right. I was like, Vlad. Oh, he's got a rare candy in hand. So, Vlad has a, the turn he needs next turn. He's got an Ultra Ball. Going to discard an Ultra Ball in the end. Uh, with this, he's going to grab a Tapu Lele, hit that Bridget, and be able to get three basic Pokemon out. And there you see he's already looking at the routes. Uh, maybe a uh, Rim Raid and another route. So, just wants to get set up and get as many Gardevoirs as he can online. So, there's a Lele. Does he get the Bridget? He's just going to get the whole combo here. So, Bridget come down as well. All right. And there's a Rimmer Raid, and then probably another route. So he's having a fantastic turn one. This is the turn one you want to see if you're the guard of our player. You want to get that, you want to get the Lele, use the Bridget, Brigetti, Brigetti Spaghetti, get those three guys out, and uh, be good to go. So that's the turn he wants. And he's got the, the turn two rare candy guard of war in hand as well. He does have a fair energy. He can attach it to the active. And he can just pass here and be A-OK. -okay. He doesn't even... Well, he's already used a supporter card. I was going to say he doesn't need to play a supporter card. But he already played uh, Bridget. <laughs> all right. So, we're going to see him shuffle up here. He's got the turn two guard. He's looking good to go. And all I really need for next turn is a energy. And that's it. That's, as long as we get energy, we're OK. We're fine here. Um, the only thing we really need is maybe another Froakie. Like I said, Vlad could have a Rare Candy, Gardevoir, Energy, Lysander play, and he could have that easily with the if he top decks an Octillery. So, pass onto my turn. Well, you see, we do have a Level Ball. We have multiple Water Energy, so Water Energy did Froakie. And let's see. Uh, we might just pass here. And yeah, we're going to pass on a Vlad's turn. So my hand doesn't have a supporter card, I don't think. It has a ton of water energies. And there's a rare candy, Guard of War. We see a VS Seeker for in. So Vlad will save us. Vlad did not have a way to get out Octillery. If he did, he'd be in a really good shape. Because if you find an Octillery, he'll be able to Bizzle Hand. And as long as he has energy, he'll take a knockout. But at least on my turn, we would be able to get down a Frogadier. There was a Level Ball in my hand, but I opted to hold it. I did want to play it and not have a Frogadier for the next turn. Uh, so that's why I held on to that Level Ball. But that... Froakie does have a splash energy on it, so as soon as it gets knocked out, it returns back into my hand. We get all those Pokemon back, so that's very nice. The splash energy here are really, really good and are really crucial in this matchup. So we do have a low ball. We have a Greninja and a Frogadier. So we can low ball for a Froakie, Frogadier, Water Duplicates, and have a really good time. So we see Vlad finding a Curlia. He unfortunately does, does not look like he has a... Uh, an Octillery in his hand right now, which is very unfortunate. He can use its ability, put another energy on the active, which I think is what he wants to do. 3, 6, 9, 12. Yeah, I think you want to get energy to the active and is trying to load up a giant guard of war, start taking out Greninjas. So, Vlad, we'll take a quick knockout going down to five prize cards. And on my turn, we got a Frogadier, we got a Low Ball to grab another Froakie. And this is really nice because when Vlad takes a knockout next turn, 
He will, will be able to put that, put that Frog of the Air back in her hand and uh, put it back down on that Froakie that we're going to put down this turn. And here we go. We'll look at our deck, see how many Frog of Deers are in there. Uh, we still have a Love Ball to grab a Froakie, so that's fine. And uh, we'll grab a Froakie. Okay, we'll look at our deck one more time. And at first, I thought I had a Frog of Deer prize, but fortunately, it is in our deck. So we're good to go. Finding three Frog of Deers, and uh, that's the end of our turn. That's a War Duplicates. Alright, Son of Lads, he's got a VS Seeker, he's got a Mallow, but the thing about Mallow right now is he does not have an Rim Raid, he doesn't have an Ultra Ball, at this point in time he does not play a Love Ball in his deck, this will change on, and this is one thing we talked about in the video earlier, is that we really, really, really wanted Love Balls to search out multiple of the basic Pokemon, so we'll see a DC being attached to the active, and we might see a VS Seeker for in. Uh, Vlad doesn't really know what's in my hand because I haven't really played a supporter card. I mean, but that's just because we've we have every we had everything we wanted every single time. Now, what Vlad could do is maybe just Mallow put a uh, Octillery and a Glade on top of the deck, or a, a Octillery and a Gardevoir on top of the deck. This does multiple things. It gets a Mallow in his discard pile, and he's able to hit that Octillery next turn. But we'll see a Via Seeker. Four and in, both players shuffle up against six new cards. Can Vlad find a guard of this turn and Rare Candy Glade? He needs to start getting set up before we start using that Shadow Stitching. Uh, he did attach a DC to the active, so he can use the guard of ability to get another Fader Drill on that bench, Curly if needed. So we're going to shuffle up here, going to get six new cards. Neither one of us had taken. Oh no, Vlad's going to get five. We're going to get six here. And uh, when Vlad takes a knockout, he'll go down to four. But then that Frogadier will return back into our hand. And uh, we're going to have. We're going to have all the Frogadiers in play, which is really, really nice. And let's see what six cards can we find. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Alrighty, so what does Vlad find? He's got an Octillery now, so he can start using that Abyssal Hand, which is really nice. He's got a Lele. He's got a Stretcher. He's got the Fader G. He's going to use that, put on the Curlia, which is really nice. And, um... Abyssal Hand for two, so one and two. There's another Curlia coming down. He's got another Rim Raid he can put down as well. But does he want to say that for routes? I think he wants the two Octillery. But nope, he's going to go for the Knockout here and going down to four Riot Guards. Those Frogadiers do get returned back into my hand. And then on my turn, let's see what is going to happen. Um, all right, so we're going to draw a card. We have a Sycamore. We got a Greninja Break in hand. Uh, see a Water G be attached to the active. So no Splash Energy. There's Greninja of Froakie. Um... We got a Field Blower getting rid of the Choice Band and the Floodstone. Uh, realistically, I probably should have kept the Choice Band on that bench Curlia, so that way he can't put a Floatstone on it, so that's something nice you could take note on. Uh, but my turn, we find a Greninja, we find a Stretcher, we find a Diet Ball, so there's Greninja number one. Uh, we got a Diet Ball for another, oh, we have two Diet Balls, which will allow us to get two Greninjas out in play. So we went from having three, four Frogadiers to three Greninjas and one Frogadier on the field, which is pretty nice. And uh, now we're going to be able to use that Shadow Stitching for 40 and uh, start getting ready to take some knockouts. All right. So let's see. You've got, we've got the, the Shadow Stitching for 70. Okay. Choice Band saving us here, doing that additional damage. And the next turn, we can knock out that Guard of our GX like we saw in the last game, just doing, just doing a ton of pressure and uh, putting a Vlad in a terrible situation. So we'll see a. Uh, Ooh, do I sh am I going okay? I'm going for a moonlight slash here to actually uh, do 110, 111 that way. Um, I think my reason behind this was to keep the water gene in my hand because we know he's taking a knockout regardless, and uh, th there's no splash energy, so that is gone. It doesn't really matter. So I'm really want to conserve that water gene, especially since my star you is not in my hand anymore. And he does play sky. I don't know what I was talking about. He definitely has a sky on the deck. In the first game, I thought he didn't play it. I maybe thought it was a cut. Uh, maybe it was. Maybe we talked about cutting it in the last video. Uh, but we see Sycamore just cutting the uh, the Rim Rage, Stretcher, Lele, and uh, the Skyla going to get seven new cards. Now, if that Skyla was a Mallow, he'd be able to Mallow for one card on top of his deck and be able to hit a Gardevoir here. Uh, but unfortunately, he didn't find it. He does have another Octillery that he could put down this turn. Uh, we put down that uh, the Oct or the Rim Rage. So now he's in trouble. He's this Gardevoir is going to get knocked out. He doesn't have another Gardevoir ready to retaliate, unfortunately. He didn't find any Fairdigies. He really didn't find anything off that Sycamore. Oh, man. All right. So, we're going to see it look through his deck. And let's see what he decides to do here. Vlad is in a terrible situation because he's going to take a knockout here, going out of three. But we have Greninja. And if you looked at my hand, there was a teammates in there. With the teammates, we're going to be allowed to get a bunch of stuff out of our deck. Uh, so we're going to see you looking through here. How can I do this? Got to figure out real quick. 
So we see Stretcher. Gonna put a card from a discard pile in my hand or Pokemon. Gonna grab a Greninja Break. Uh, gonna put that on the active. We got a teammates gaining two cards out of my deck, and we will be able to take a knockout here, which is fantastic. So two cards come down, and I wonder how I'm gonna decide to do this play. Uh, so 110. So he has 130 HP. If I remember correctly, I think I think Gardevoir has 240. I never remember how much HP Gardevoir has. It's still new to me, so that's why I know it's 230 or 240. Unfortunately. Um, so we see two Greninja Breaks coming out. We see a Giant Water Shuriken, number one, coming to the active. We'll see. It must have 230, because I'm a double Giant Water Shuriken here for the knockout, going down to five or four prize cards. And then, do we find another energy? Nope, there's a Staryu. And we're just going to see a pass here. Uh, do I put down the Staryu? Um, maybe I don't put the Staryu down. I'm waiting for him to send a Pokemon. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, okay, that's what's happening. I'm waiting for him to provide a Pokemon. So he's going to promote the Octillery. Uh, we're going to put it on the Staryu. And then we're just going to pass here. We have no energies. But we we were able to giant double giant water shuriken for the knock on that Guardy. So Owen of last turn, he does have a Gallade. He can get that down. Okay. He's got a Choice Band. No Floatstone, unfortunately. We did feel below that Octillery Elf. Now you might be saying, why did he promote the Octillery? Well, I guess he did I mean, if you don't have an attacker, you really don't send the Curlios to get knocked out. So that's why he promoted the Octillery, saying, you know what, if I don't find an attacker, at least my Octillery is the only one getting knocked out here. So he does have a Sycamore in him. It looks like he's going to play that because, I mean, yeah, he does have a VS Seeker for like Skylo or Mallow or something like that, but he needs a ton of cards. So he's going to Sycamore, just discard his hand, finding seven new cards. And what does he find here? He's got a Field Blower, he's got an Ultra Ball. All right, so he's got a Gardevoir GX as well. So he's able to get a Guardy down. But right now, that Gardevoir, it looks like it's only doing uh, 70 damage. It looks like it's only a DC and a Fairy Energy attached to it. So it would not take a knockout on this Greninja Break. And Vlad is going to be in a terrible spot. Like, being able to put your energies back in your hand with Greninja is super strong. Uh, it's just really good overall. So we see Ultra Ball just creating a Lysander and a Sycamore. Okay. And let's see what he decides to get here. Maybe another Routes. If he has one of those, he could put it down. I don't think I see a Routes in his hand right now. Uh, he does already have three Routes. Uh, one of the discard pile, two in play. So he might have one prize. And even though Vlad took that early knockout, looks like the Greninja player is going to start making a comeback here. All right, so uh, gonna shuffle up and let's see what does Vlad do here. Does he find a Flowstone to retreat that Octillery? We're gonna see Abyssal Hand. Oh no, he's using Premonition, rearrange top five cards of his deck. I see, yeah, I do not see a Flowstone in there. That is gonna be terrible news for Vlad. Um, because if he can't retreat to Octillery, all we have to, all we can do is like do some giant water shurikens to bench Guardian GX and Shadow Shurikens the, act, the active Octillery and. Uh, not take a knockout, keep the Octillery stuck at the X spot, which is really nice, and make it where he can't use the next turn by Shadow Switching him. So that's something we could do here, but Vlad is going to rearrange top five cards of his deck. Looks like he's content with that way. We'll see a business hand for two. There's a DCE and a Fade Energy. So with this DCE, he'll be able to commit it and retreat, but man, that is not the way you want to retreat here. You don't want to commit a DCE that way. And uh, they receive the Fade Energy be attached with this building. So 3, 6, 9, 12. It's going to do 120 damage. Still not even enough for a knockout. Now Vlad is going to be in a bad situation here. Because we are going to be able to take a knockout. We, we might be able to take a knockout here this turn. If we do a double a double giant water shuriken for 120. Find a choice band and an energy. That's 110. And we'll be able to take a knockout on this guard of our GX. That is 230 HP. So there's a water, water, ultra ball, dive ball, and a starmie. So I do not think we hit the choice band. Um, unfortunately, uh, but still, we're gonna put a bunch of pressure on this guard of warrior, put Vlad in a terrible situation. All right, so let's see how we're gonna play this turn out. We're gonna love ball, I mean, uh, dive ball, sorry, and let's see what we dive ball here for. I think the majority of our Pokemon are either in play or in the discard pile. So there we go, getting a Froakie, realizing like, yep, there's not a Frogadier or a Greninja to get, so I guess I'm gonna grab a Froakie and get that out. Okay, so grabbing the Froakie. Uh, we did have we did get a smart Starmie server to space speaking here to get a bunch of energies in our hand by discarding card. Uh, so we're gonna see a giant water shuriken, and I wonder where I'm gonna put these energies at. Um, let's see. What we could do is maybe put on that bench top with Lele, and like double hit it, and the next turn take a knock on it while shadow switching the active Gardevoir. That could be a play. Um, let's see how how we play this turn. There's a bunch of different things going on in my head here. <laughs> uh, what we could do is double giant water shark in the Mitch Tapu Lele and then 
Moonlight Slash, pick up the energy. Okay. Uh, so we see a giant water trigger, the active for 60. We're going to see a retreat. And I think just like knocking on the guard here is probably, the, or like just full force hitting the guard of war. Uh, so 100. Uh, space speaking it, two energies back in her hand. Discard that Froki saying, hey, we really don't need this guy anymore. And do we go for a shadow stitching here for 40? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Um, that could be a possibility. If we shadow stitching here, he can't use like Abyssal Hand, he can't use anything like that. And I think, no, we're going to go for Moonlight Slash here. And I think the reason why we went for Moonlight Slash is we were able to take, out, take a knockout next turn with a giant Water Shuriken. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, because if we do a Moonlight, if we do a shadow stitching here for 40, we can't take a knockout with a giant Water Shuriken, which is what I don't want to, uh, which is what I want to do next turn. And since we did this, it needs, he needs more energies to knock us out as well. Right now he's only hitting 120, so he needs to find two energies. Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Yeah, he needs two energies. So a DC or a double fairy will give him the knockout. But even then, he's only taking one prize card. And then we're going to take a knock on his guardy. And we're both going to be tied up 2 to 2. So this game is a lot closer for sure. And let's see what Vlad does here. Does he have a way to get another guardy out? He doesn't have another Rouse in the field, which is unfortunate. Uh, so he might have to start swinging with his Gallade here. Um... Yeah, let's see. Vlad is contemplating what to do. He, he might have. He might not have any more DCs as well. He did commit one uh, to the active earlier to the guard. He might have one DCE left uh, to attack with that Glade. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's got. It looks like it's two DCs. Discard pile. If I saw that correctly, so he definitely only has one left. So he needs to hit that one for the guard of war and maybe use sensitive blade to get a knockout. Oh, not. That doesn't take a knockout. Man, he's got a life in her hand, so he could bring up the bench guardy or the bench Greninja, but then still he's in trouble. I don't know. Vlad's in trouble now. He needs the okay, so he's gonna use that premonition, rearrange top five cards of his deck, and he's gonna see what does he need here. There's a choice band, not helpful. Ultra Ball, not helpful. Um, there's a rare candy, I think. Where he really needs to find is get a way to get another routes onto the field. Um, that is what he's gonna struggle with here, just not finding a route. All right, so I'm going to see. It looks like he's going to rearrange top five cards of his deck. He does have a Bissell Hand for one. And there's an Ultra Ball. All right, so what does he grab with the Ultra Ball here? He discards a Rare Candy and the Field Blower. He's going to look through his deck again to see what's all in there. Uh, there's not another Routh or anybody in there, so he really can't grab anything. I don't even see a way to get a Pokemon back. I don't think I saw a Super Rod or a Stretch or anything like that. But we'll see it in. Both players will shuffle up, and Vlad will have to find a DCE here. Now, even if he does, and he takes a Knockout, and we don't have any Energies... We still have that space beacon, and this is how good Starmie is. Being able to space beacon every turn to get more energies into your hand is broken, and uh, that is what's going to swing a uh, swing up to like make the guard or the Greninja player even better now because they have this Starmie that you know I didn't really see anybody play in their Greninja decks, but now I would um, almost always include it in there. So that's a div thing or uh, thing right there. So both players are going to get, uh, Vlad's going to get three, I'm going to get four. And we do already have the Water G in hand, so we're good to go. We can take a, a giant Water Shaking for knockout. But does Vlad find a DCE? If he does not find a DCE, he's in trouble here uh, for sure. So nope, just going to swing for 120 damage, no Water Energy. So we got a giant Water Shaking at number one. Um... <sighs> What we could do here is double a giant water strike in the bench, uh, Tapu Lele, and then maybe Moonlight Slash for 80, and that will take a knockout while leaving that Tapu Lele ready to go. So all of a sudden, like Vlad, he was taking names, he got to turn to Guard of War, he's looking good to go, and that will change like later in the game. And Greninja is a slow deck, it is a slow deck, but if you get set up, you can easily take take the game, and as, that's what we're seeing right here today. So. Let's see, how do I play this out? We could, like I said, double giant water shrink in the bench top of Lele, so giant water shrink in number one. Uh, that was actually a. <laughs> uh, there we go. I, that was actually a splash energy, that's why we couldn't do that. We'll see a space beacon discarding that Starmie, or get, discarding the Jirachi, getting two energies back in her hand. Thanks to that Starmie, we'll be able to use a giant water shrink in number two. And, um. Yeah, I just. I don't know how Vlad can do this here, so we retreat into the other Greninja break. We will giant water sugar in that bench tapu lele. So there we go. Boom hit for another 60. And we'll see an energy to the active. And we're gonna play it in here. Uh, just because we're gonna take two more prize cards. Just wanna get set up. Maybe find uh, a stretcher. Maybe get another frog of deer down. Maybe put more Greninja back in our deck. It really doesn't matter. I don't think Vlad can really take the game. I'm just trying to make sure there's 
just trying to make sure we limit his hand as much as possible. Um, let's see. So we both get four. I'll get four. He gets three. All right. We find a Guzma in. We find a Diet Ball. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so we're gonna take a knockout here. Going down to two prize cards. Okay. And let's see what can Vlad really do. I mean, he's got a Glade. He can uh, sense a blade for the knockout, but uh, he needs a hex here. If he can hex plus DCE, he'll be that's the only way he can really do this. And hex plus DCE, and that's how he can take a knockout. If he if he does that, we won't be able to win immediately. But we do have a Guzma in hand, so we can bring him that Guzma. Guzma is going to take the game here. I mean, even if he goes for hacks, we have we can Guzma and bring up that Tapu Lele. So I'm uh, going to see our first uh, new supporter card being played in this game. I don't think we Guzma at all game one, but we did have plenty of Gardevoir GX action happening. So we see a, perm a permission going to look at top cards of his uh, deck. Maybe he's got three in hand. And, uh, yeah. Let's see what Vlad decides to do. He's going to look through his Discord see what's all in there. He could go for N, but N doesn't really matter. If he ends, we're just going to John Water Sugar on that bench. Tapu Lele. And, uh, yeah. I don't know what Vlad could do here. He is in trouble. He does have a VS Seeker for Hacks in hand. Okay. But what he really needs is a DCE. So we're going to see a VS Seeker for Hacks. And we'll see a pass. So on to my turn, uh, we get to play a new supporter card finally. We're going to see a Guzma bringing up that Tapu Lele. I'm going to bring him on another Greninja. We can retreat back into it and take a knockout that way. And there we go. That is going to be the game. And there we go. Greninja taking a 2-0 against the Gardevoir GX deck. And like I said, oh my goodness, there's two Faderjis and a Rouse and Vlad's prize cards. He had terrible prize cards both games, but that does happen sometimes. So guys, they oh, he had a DC on top too. Okay. Uh, but guys, there we go. There's the Greninja and the Gardevoir GX deck. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, there's going to be four more days of this. We got Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then maybe a video on Saturday, depending on if we recorded one or not. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Check out the deck breaks down, down below in the description if you want to see how these decks work and everything like that. And once PTCGO does have Burning Shadow stuff online, I will definitely start covering that as soon as possible. But guys, hope you have a great day. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you tomorrow where we see Decidueye, Gold Speed versus Espeon Garboder. All right, guys. Bye. Alright guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to our three sponsors, Six Cards, Yeti Gaming, and the Pokemon Company International. Links to everything will be down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty.